Fuck, now we have to look at the ra raids rewards. Whoa, what the fuck is this? What are we looking at? What the fuck is this? What is a wand and a shield? Wand and shield. Dude, look at this. Shield. New Biss shield? Huh? Stop spoiling it. We're going to get there. Missouri, Missouri, Missouri armor. Powerful ranged wielders. They focus primary requirements 80 ranged. 30 defense or 80 when upgraded? Probably the biggest change in this rubric is the removal of the low life effect and the additional and the additional dodge mechanics from Missouri, from Missouri armor. Although some of you liked the unique effect for the set, its uses were a bit niche and many of you felt the trade-off was simply not worth it. Such as such the wait, shh, shh, shh. the armor set will now consist of helmet, chest plate, and chain skirt. No amulet. This doesn't mean that low life won't be visited in some form in the future, but for now it won't be a feature here. Instead, the stats came from the effects of low life on the original Masri armor will make up the base versions of the new set, plus the original prayer bonus. Wait, base version? Yep, we decided to take a similar approach to next rewards and offer some shiny upgrades to the Masri armor, with the base version still being equipable with different requirements. Oh, okay. Okay. Using plates broken down from Armadale's armor, you can craft them at 90 crafting onto your Missouri armor, making them upgrade into arm upgraded versions. Cool. These are the values. Helmet is going to give you one plate. Chainsaw is going to give you four. Or chest plate is going to give you four. Chainsaw is going to be three. And then to make them, you're going to need one, four, and three. Okay. The base equipment will focus on low defense and high offense, making it one of the best choices for an offensive range build, while the upgraded version will be the new best-in-slot range gear in all categories. Whew. The fully upgraded armor will surpass the offenses, the offense capabilities of Armadale's pieces. For comparison, the fully upgraded armor will have the following stats over a full Armadale's set. Whoa. So this is all being added? Whoa. So we're looking at a plus 19 range accuracy, a plus 8 range strength and defense. I mean, what? I mean, some de some mage, de plus 12 mage defense. I mean, good defenses, I guess. Even mage accuracy is going up on the armor, though, which is nice. Okay. So what is the, what's the, does it not have an effect anymore? So it doesn't have any effect? I thought... What are the... So you can use the wand with it. What the hell is the additional dodge mechanics? What is this? Probably the biggest change is removal of low life effect and the additional dodge mechanic. Oh, that came with low life? Oh, okay, never mind. Okay. Oh, I didn't, I didn't know that. My bad. Okay, now we get to the Hekka of Tumekin. Tumekin was the god of the sun. Illidanus was the goddess of fertility. As husband and wife, they were the joint leaders of the Menophyte pantheon. But while Tumakin and Illidanus steered the people of the Can the Caridian Desert spiritually, it was the responsibility of the human pharaoh to rule in practical matters. Osmumton Wait, Osmumton 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 was the last pharaoh before the end of the ancient war, and he fought alongside two Meccan against the enemy forces until the noble god sacrificed himself to end the conflict. After her husband's death, Elidinus fled the mor fled to mourn the loss of her family. Before, before, before she left. <laughs> How do you guys mistype two befores? Before, before. Come on, reread what the reread. The Reread. That's not me. That wasn't me. Before, before she left, the goddess gifted Ozmutton with Tumekin's Hekka and her own broken wand. Ooh. Okay. So the requirements are going to be 85 magic. The the Hekka of Tumekin is a wand-like magical weapon requiring 85 magic. It has built-in spell... Wait. It has built-in spell with charges with... 
which will need to be replenished <laughs> using one soul rune and three chaos runes per charge. The I, it's because it's like I'm zooming in and out too much. <laughs> the wad stats. Haven't changed too much and still have a base attack rate of two cycles with every fourth hit firing a bigger attack that deals significantly more damage and with a longer delay afterwards. For a more visual example, 20 damage, 20 damage, 20 damage, 60 damage, two cycles, two cycles, two cycles, four cycles. All right. And here's the newest example of how damage will be calculated. Standard fast attacks will... Scaled based on magical. Oh god, the slower fourth attack based on magical minus 25. Oh god, Ma made strength no longer applies uniquely to the Hekka. Quorum. While the original size of the Hekka was great on paper, it was lacking a, a certain something. If you look at the previous re reads, words like Twisted Bone said they were unique, powerful, and most importantly, had that wow factor that made them worth the grind. Instead of scaling differently according to your magic strength, the Hekka will now unleash a special effect. To Dependent on the spellbook you are attuned to, alongside a fourth more powerful attack, allowing you more options for your builds. Here's what we're thinking: standard spellbook gives you a 10% to boost to damage. Ancient spellbook: the spell will hit in a three by three area of effect attack. Lunar spellbook heals allies by five percent of your current magic level, rounded down along the path of the projectile capped at five players. Increased the Hekka's attack range by one. This applies to all attacks, not just the fourth. Arceus Spellbook. That's that's so busted. What the fuck? Why is the Lunar Spellbook so fucking good for this? What? Okay. Well, I mean, I like where they're going with this, but that needs to... Heals your... The Ancient one is nuts. The AoE effect is probably good. Yeah, for Slayer, you're right. Arceus Spellbook. Lose three prayer points, and in return, the boost is not permanent and will be lost after a period of time. What boost? Drain 5% of the NPC's magic level up to 20%. Boost your magic level by 50% of the drain magic level cap to 15%. I mean, that just sounds... sounds probably That's probably crazy good. I can't can't make uh, any sense of it. This means you've got a fast-attacking weapon that can be mastered to work effectively in tricky encounters, along with free additional mastery to explore with unique spellbook effects and varying attack speeds. Because, let's be real, magic needs some love. That's dope. I'm hyped for that. Yeah, I'm hyped for what they do with that. Maybe we need to change change around some of the effects but yeah that'll be really cool all right now onto the word of eladinus we haven't done much tweaking to the word of eladinus since it effectively meets our original design goals here's a recap 80 magic 80 defense 80 prayer the word of eladinus will be the next ne new best in slot magical shield players will get the broken ward as rare loot from the tomb of a mascot with 90 prayer and 90 smithing you'll be able to combine the broken ward with an arcane sigil and 10k soul runes to repair it. Players without those stats will be able to pay Abbot Langley 20 mil to create it for them. Okay. Additionally, existing arcane spirit shields can be handed to Langley for disassembly, returning just the arcane sigil back so players can make the switch. This won't require a GP fee, but will destroy a blessed shield in the process. Okay, makes sense. Both the broken and the fully repaired wards can be equipped, but the broken ward will be tradable and untradable when fixed. Players can dismantle it to recover both the sigil and the ward, but the runes will be lost. I hate that, dude. Why we gotta why we gotta lose the runes? Is it because it's just like a oh is it's a flat it's a flat 10k, that's why it's not like a recharge thing. Okay. Dying in PvP will result in the sigil being broken and the ward being dropped. Here are the stats for the charged L ward and the Arcane Spirits shield stats for comparison. So we're looking at um Five magic attack, five percent magic damage, one prayer. Doesn't look that good. I mean, it looks okay, I guess. All right, now we go into the light bearer. The light bearer is a ring with no attack, defense, or other bonuses. It does, however, have a unique effect. When equipped, your special attack energy will regenerate one hundred percent faster, approximately fifteen per fifteen seconds per ten percent. Uh, divided by 150 seconds per... Oh, so that's basically... Uh, dash. That's a dash. 150 seconds to get to 100% from zero. Unequipping the ring will cause the timer to reset. Blah, 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 blah. Special attack warrant is used. We think this ring will shine in places where kill times are longer. Grardor, Krill, Sire. How about Corp? You could even use it while woodcutting or fishing. Oh, good point. You could woodcut and fish. All right. Osmum... Oh, I hate this guy's name. Osmumpton's Fang. 82 attack. Osmumpton's Fang is a five-cycle weapon that packs serious punch while on stab. 
How are we, how are we thinking about this, boys? Sorry, I've been reading chat. I, I mean, these are crazy. These are pretty cool. It's going to be useless. It's worse than a Zami spear. Well, maybe, well, they can they can change their they can change it. So basically, I need to run down to this thing. For example, if its max hit was sixty, it would then roll nine to sixty, provided it passes accuracy. Five second weapon that packs a serious punch while on stab. Excels against monsters with a high defense. We expect its damage effect now to be comparable to rapier tier weapons on opponents with low defense, with much great, greater damage per second output on opponents with higher defense. We're doing something a bit different with the fangs, so let's look at how the damage will be calculated. Instead of rolling 0 to max hit like most weapons, it will instead roll max hit. Okay. Uh, for example, if the max hit is 60, it would roll between 9 and 51. Oh, okay. Needs to be calculated with strength buffs in mind. Well, they can just change that. I trust Sebe. Sebe will, will tell them to change it. I'll make him change it. And there's more. So that's... All right. We'll, we'll have to... We'll worry about the Fang another time. Other than the Fang, I think everything's been really good. They haven't... They didn't change the Light Bearer too much. Um, I did like what they have changed. I think it's so far so good. I'm excited. I'm excited. Now let's look at the uh, Stat Renewal Potion. Okay. We know that one of the most useful potions you create during Chambers of Zeric is Overload, which boosts players' combat stats... By 6, 60% while damaging them for 50 HP. Uniquely, the boost is repeated every 15 seconds until the effects wear off, after which the player heals 50 HP. This makes it better than your standard potion as it ticks up over time. Tim's Mask it will introduce a new secondary component called Lily of the Sands. When combined with a Dwarf Weave, this will create the new Stat Renewal Potion. You will need 71 herb Herbler to create it, and each one will net you 150 XP. Essentially, the stat renewal potion has the same stat renewal aspect of an overload. So if your combat stats are below base, it will restock them back up. Oh, this is going to be so good for Nex. So this is this is literally like the potion for Nex. How often are we brewing down and having to repot at Nex? Oh, this is going to save that. Mm. Mm. Such, a, su such a chef's kiss. All right, Pharaoh's Scepter Teleport. Okay, one more treat while you're here. All right, use the Scepter on the Obelisk outside the raid entrance. You'll be granted an additional teleport. Close to the raid entrance. This will only be possible after completing Beneath Cursed Sands. Nice. So they're going to add a new teleport after the quest to, that you can use on the scepter to get to the raid easier. Makes sense. The scepter would also be recolored and made untradeable after completing its attunement. Hype, hype, hype. That's a wrap. Alright. I'm fucking stoked. I'm fucking stoked.